Hi, my name is Celeste. I am the homeschooling mom of three boys. And in this video, I'm gonna be sharing our top five tips for homeschooling. Whether you are a new homeschooler or whether you are a seasoned homeschooler, I hope these tips can be helpful to you. Right, the first thing is what is the best curriculum i think that's a question that many people well all of us honestly probably ask ourselves what curriculum do i choose with so many options out there so many choices it's hard to know what is the best one and in my opinion i believe the best curriculum is the one that makes sense to you as a teacher and the one that you will use. I think that there are so many amazing curriculums. I've come across really some amazing programs, but I look at it and I say, mm, I don't think that's gonna work for me. It just doesn't click with my brain and how I organize things and how kind of I make sense of things within myself, you know? And I think even though our children they each have their own learning style. And I know I talked about learning styles um, maybe a couple months ago. Even more important than knowing their learning style is knowing our teaching style, as a, our learning style and our teaching styles as teachers, as homeschool moms. Because what we're able to do is take this curriculum, make sense to it in our brain, and then adjust it to each of our children's learning styles. And I find that taking that approach is much easier. I'll be sure to link down below our curriculum choices for this year in case you haven't seen it and you'd like to check them out. Um, I'm just finishing the finalizing of our curriculum choices for the next um, school year where we will have an eighth grader, a sixth grader, and a fourth grader. I can't even believe I'm saying those grades, but it's so exciting. And I'm really excited about some of those choices that we have. Um, we're gonna be trying some new things out. Also, we're gonna be keeping some of our favorites. So um, please subscribe if you'd like to stay connected and see what those choices will be. I hope to show them as those different curriculums um, come in for the next school year. All right, my second tip is regarding rules and expectations. Should you have rules in your homeschool? Should you not? That's definitely a very personal choice. I can say for us here that we are currently in our third year of homeschooling. And when we started our first year, I remember that we had our rules up on the wall. I'll try to insert a picture if I can find it of our first year, kind of I had all the rules up on the wall. Um, and I realized after that first year that it really wasn't necessary. <laughs> For us i actually took the rules down and we haven't had it why why do you ask because i noticed that our homeschool rules or the way that we work the way that we do things is how we do life it's basically our house our home our family rules um and it's all based a lot on our favorite um our theme verse for our homeschool which is colossians 323 I'm sure I must have shared it in the past, um, but the, it says this, it says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord and not for people. And that really is the heart of our homeschooling, knowing that all that I do as a teacher, as a mother, all that they do as students, as our sons, what my husband does also in his role as a teacher, as dad, all that we are doing, we are living our lives to the glory of God. We are living our lives for him. And when our dedication or our commitment is to him it changes everything because even if I don't feel like doing something one day or someone doesn't feel like doing something one day we tell ourselves you know it's not about how I feel it's that I am doing this to the glory of God I'm honoring this opportunity that God has given us to homeschool and I'm taking advantage of it and I think that that mentality and that heart has been something that really has helped us. So we don't have any special homeschool rules. Um, I think that one of the things that really drives our homeschool is the thought or the idea of diligence. And it's something that I heard once, this definition of diligence that I loved. It was start fast, work hard, finish strong. And when I heard that, it just clicked for me. And I remember sharing it with the boys. And oftentimes I'll say diligence and they say, start fast, work hard, finish strong. And it really just helps us to stay focused on the task at hand, knowing that even if this particular task or worksheet or problem is not necessarily something I want to do, I know that I'm going to work with diligence because we know the end that we have. We know our goals, we know our whys, and we as a family, we're working Working together to stay focused on that. All right, my third tips is to have joy in learning. And it sounds really simple, but 
I don't know about you, but I know in my personality, love organization and having a flow and having an expectation, something that really has helped us in our homeschool. Um, but within those expectations and, and that structure and that organization, I think it's so important to have joy in the midst of all that we do. So I don't think there's a day that goes, no, there's not a day goes by that we don't laugh, um, that we don't enjoy our time together. We really try intentionally to bring joy through the presence of the Holy Spirit, through our attitudes, through our um, treasuring and valuing each other. All right, my fourth tip is to organize, organize, organize. Have organizational systems in place for you as a teacher, for your children, and for your space. It just helps things flow so much better. At least for us, it's so helpful not to be ever looking where is something, I can't find it, or trying to refigure out how I'm gonna do something every single week. The things that we do over and over, we'd love to be able to have a consistent place where it goes, and also a, a, a specific system that we use to do it or to access it. So some examples of that, is that for our space, I love the use of clear bins. And I don't think you can maybe see back here, but I'll try to reach one and bring it down. Um, you might have seen some of these, these bins I have. So these bins are very simple bins. I know I've showed them, I think, in the past. Um, they're from Dollar Tree. They're very simple bins, um, clear with kind of a lid that opens up on top. I love these bins because then what I'm able to do is take smaller bins, like for example, this is where we store our paper clips and put them right in here. And here I have smaller paper clips, um, put them right in here. So I'm able to categorize and really organize it. And because it's clear, it's very easy for me to look inside and see what I have. So I just have to pull out the bin quickly and, and see. Putting a label in the front really helps me because then when it's on the shelf, the label just gives it a nice clean finish in the front. Meanwhile, if I tilt it, I'm able to quickly see what I have inside. Another reality is that you need to work with the limitations that you have, right? In the space that you have. And for us, we don't really have the space to have individual desks for each one of us. So what we have is a big table, kind of like a dining room table. And then what I've done is I've put Sterilite bins underneath each of our place settings so that we each get our own set of drawers um, that we can put our school books. Um, I put my teacher manuals and things like that. Very easily accessible. They have their Bibles there, all their notebooks, everything that they need. So it's almost like a set of drawers that they have right next to their seat um, at the table. So that's been very helpful as far as organizing our space. I once heard the space of your home referred to as real estate. It has a value. And so something that we have done is really think about you know, the things that we have within the space of our homeschool room, how functional is it? How often do you we use it? Do we really need it? Because it's taking up some real estate in here and we wanna really maximize it and not have it cluttered, but really have a clear functional space and that has worked very well. Another thing that we do use are our student binders and our teacher binders. I have shared this um, in previous videos. This is my mom homeschool planner. It's where I have all of my kind of my plan for the school year. I prep it in the beginning and I use it throughout the year. The boys also have their student planners that they use from week to week to track their work. Um, again, I've shared a look inside that I'll be sure to link those videos down below. But as far as organization, it is something that has helped us so much to be able to stay right on track, to know what's expected, to give the boys independence in their work as well. And really helps me not to have to reinvent the wheel every single week. My fifth tip is provision for our homeschool. If we think about homeschooling, it does require an investment. It does require an investment of finances. It requires an investment of time. Um, we have some needs in the area of emotions. We have needs for knowledge, for an, un, for an understanding. There's so many different needs that a homeschool family has, right? Different needs that we have within our homeschools. And for us, it's been so amazing to see each one of those needs met and provided for by God. And something that I've always, I always say is that if the project belongs to God, he will provide for it. And for us, our homeschool belongs to God. And we have seen his faithfulness in providing for each of the areas, financial provision, physical provision. We've seen emotional provision. We've seen intellectual provision. We have seen provision in every area and every way. Every single time we have had a need and we've brought it to the Lord, 
he has provided for that need, no matter the type of need it has been. So I just want to encourage you, if you currently have a need in your homeschool, whether it's a financial need, an emotional need, a physical need, maybe you're going through an illness and you don't have the physical strength to do what is being asked of you. It's amazing to see how God can provide supernaturally for any of our needs. Again, if the project is his, I faithfully believe that he will provide for it. And I want to leave you with this verse kind of as a promise, as an encouragement. It's in Philippians chapter four and it's verse 19. It says, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Our God will supply all our needs. Doesn't matter the type, doesn't matter the way he will make a way. I pray the Lord blesses you and your family. I hope that you've had a wonderful start to this new calendar year of your homeschool. May the Lord bless you and your family. Thanks so much for watching and I look forward to talking to you soon.